Hi, I'm Krista West, and as you can see, I finally figured out the lavalier mic, which is great. Um, but I'm Krista West of Avlia Mediterranean Folk Embroidery, and this is another episode of floss of my floss tube. And so, uh, first off, yes, have the lavalier mic. Still haven't figured out the wireless one, but I'm checking on that. So, anyways. Just to tell you a little bit about myself, I'm the owner and designer of Avalia Mediterranean Folk Embroidery, and I specialize in Mediterranean inspired, obviously, uh, cross stitch and embroidery patterns and kits uh, based on historic textiles out of private collections and museums, like throughout the Mediterranean. That's my jam. That's what I love to do. All things ancient textile design is me. So, oh, I have to tell you all my other stuff, right? Okay, so thank you to everyone who's subscribing on YouTube. I'm really excited to tell you I hit 1,000 subscribers this past week. So thank you, thank you, thank you. That just, that means a lot to me, um, just that people are so interested in this topic. That's just very exciting. And then I'm in the middle, I'm almost at day 30 of my 90-day daily Instagram post challenge. Now, most of you are like, what's the challenge in that? And I'm like, well, if you're my age and like fairly new to social media, it's a challenge. So, uh, and I'm totally enjoying it and it's been really fun. I'm loving to see what people respond to. So that's been really great. And then you can also find my work at my website, which is www.avlea, A-V-L-E-A dot life, or on Etsy as Avlea Folk Embroidery. And for those of, who have, uh, those of you who have not heard the explanation, avli in Greek means courtyard. And it's where women would have sat in, um, in their houses. They're like these little internal courtyards designed into a lot of older Greek homes. And it's where they would have sat and done their stitching. And I just loved that whole peaceful image of women sitting stitching in a courtyard. Um, actually, really funny story before we get started. I totally embarrassed my family on one of our trips to Greece. We were in Athens and we were like walking along and my Greek is not great. Like I can do pleasantries and kind of get by a little bit. And I do know a lot of handcraft terms, but I'm not fluent by any stretch of the imagination. And we're in Athens and we're walking, um, we're just walking along this city block and it's a really nice area. It's near the Agora, um, which is sort of not really close to the Parthenon, but like within walking distance. And we're walking down the street and I see this house and these houses. I'm so curious about these houses because I just love houses it's like old houses is just totally a thing I love. And I see these workmen and they are um, coming in and out of this house and the doors are totally open. These like wide big doors are open. And I look in and I see one of these courtyards and I'm like, oh my gosh, that is so cool. So I just went up because like in my experience, most Greek people are very friendly. And if you just say hello and you try, like they're really, really nice. I've had some of my best conversations in Greece with just total strangers, uh, especially about handwork. That's a super fun thing to talk about with Greeks because they all have a really good memory or story. So here I am at this house. My husband and my kids are like, don't do that. Don't go up there. Don't go up there. But I'm like, listen, the workmen are right here. I'm sure they're friendly. <laughs> and so anyways, I sat there and I talked to the workmen. I'm like, hi, I'm from America. And I am wondering, you know, about the house. And they were like, come on, come on, come on. So they brought me in and they actually took me up to the second story and showed me the kitchen remodel and stuff that they were doing. And it was super awesome. But my best memory of that was seeing this whole courtyard that you walk into. And there's like these little low benches and there's a tree literally growing up the middle of it. And this is where people stitch, which is just like super cool. Well, that was a whole long, you know, rabbit trail right there. So let's get into what we're going to talk about today. So today I want to talk about my new release design because there's kind of a lot of stuff to talk about, about this design, because it really sort of marked a turning point for me design wise. Now today's design, the design that is releasing today, is actually already on the Avalia site. And I think I got it up on Etsy last night is what we're calling Vespina's Anemone. Okay. So it's this design here. It's just this beautiful historic design. I mean, wow, where do we start? Oh, and I'm offering it in three versions, which I'm gonna go over and talk about why it's in three versions. The first is the bit kit. These are my little small bit kits. I just named them that because it's a little bit of embroidery. And these have been very popular for people who are trying, who wanna try out like the specialty fabric that we import from Greece for counted thread. You just kinda wanna give that a little twirl. Like you can try a small kit 
or people getting back into the craft. That's been exciting. I've gotten a lot of emails and a lot of YouTube comments. People like, hey, I'm just getting back into cross stitch and these are perfect because I don't feel intimidated by the project. And then I'm also offering it in a standard kit and pattern size. And that is my fabulous interchangeable wall hanging or table runner. And we'll talk about that in just a minute. And then the third thing I'm offering in, this is new, and this is what I'm probably most excited about. Well, I'm really excited about the interchangeable wall hanging um, table runner, but I'm really excited about this. And this is something that I've been trying to wrap my mind around for a long time, is how to give all of you amazing, lovely stitchers the original design. But the problem is that the original design, some of these original designs are so large there's just not enough hours in the day, much as I wish there were, there's not enough hours in the day for me to stitch a sample in order to take a photograph. But I suddenly realized that just was not a good enough reason to not put these patterns out there. So library edition patterns, this is gonna be happening for a lot of my designs coming up. They'll be released in multiple formats. They'll be released in a smaller version as a bit kit, in a regular kit and pattern, and then in a library edition when I have access to like the original. So basically a library edition pattern is the full charting for the original design. And so in this case, the original design for Despina is an Enemy came from a friend of mine. I was actually doing a speaking gig in Oklahoma City and I was staying with a friend of mine, Vicky, while I was there. And I had my embroidery with me. Are we sensing a theme now, people? Like, people talk to me. When I pull out that embroidery, people are like, what? Like, you're embroidering? And we have all these great conversations. So those of you who don't, like, travel or, like, take your embroidery out into the world, I would highly encourage that you do that because it's amazing what kind of conversations you can have about that with people. Anyway, so I'm at Vicky's house, and it's, it's in the evening, and I pull up my embroidery. And she's like, you like that stuff? And I'm like, oh, I love this stuff. She goes, oh, here, I have all my Prika stuff from my mom. Now, this is pretty exciting because Vicky's actually from Greece. She was born in Greece, and she immigrated to the States, I think, when she was, like, in her late teens or early 20s and met and married her Greek-American husband. And anyways, so she has, like, the full real deal Prika. So she starts pulling out these embroideries and it is just this like treasure chest. And one of the ones that immediately caught my eye was what's now our new Despina's Anemone design. Her mom had stitched it for her. It's originally about three feet by three feet. Uh, no, I think it might even be a little bit bigger than that. Hers was probably closer to four feet by four feet because it was actually stitched surprisingly on 10 count fabric. So stitched kind of big. Now I've in all of my designs, I've specified uh, 26 count, which equals 13 stitches to the inch. But hers was actually on 10 stitches to the inch, which really worked with this much more sort of primitive, almost style design. So what I've done with a library edition pattern is the initial cover page where normally we would put a photo, would, where we would have like, say on the bit kit, we have like the full sample photo. I've basically put the entire chart so you get an idea of what the pattern is for. And then I've inserted a small photo showing some of the design actually stitched. And then these patterns have the regular instructions, but then they have the, cor the full corner chart. Now, this chart is a smidge smaller just because man, we're cramming a lot of information in there, but this is still workable. And if you need to, you could always like blow it up on a photocopier or something. Then on the back, it shows the entire full design as it was originally done. So you can see this is a really big design, but there are some amazing um, elements in this that I didn't want to be lost for posterity. Like for example, on this, they take the little, the square motif, which is super cool, but then they take the little chevron design and they run it in an angle. And I just thought that was so fabulous. So now how hard are these designs? Well, here's the deal. They're no harder. A library edition design is no harder than the same skills you would use to say, make the small bit kit. It's just more. It's just more stitching, more floss. Do y'all wanna hear the floss count for this baby? Wow. Okay, you need 146 yards of, black, of DMC 310 black for this, the library edition design. You need 36 yards of coral and it kind of goes on. It's a lot of floss. 
cost. It's definitely a big stitching commitment, but I think for people who really want to sink their teeth into a big project, this would be awesome. So as, as I have the opportunity on a lot of my patterns, I will be releasing them in bit kit standard kits. And whenever I can, I'm going to be releasing a library edition kit like, oh, sneak peek. Um, I just got the sample back. I haven't even finished it, but I'm too excited about it. So I'm just going to show it to you anyways. So we just did this. A friend of mine has been stitching this. We just did the sample for this Ukrainian crisscross design, which, oh my word, I'll do a video on that. And, and where I found this design is really hilarious. You'll have to stay tuned. But like, for example, this is a small bit kit version like this, but it came in a much larger table runner version. So for this, I'll also do a library edition. And that actually comes in two colorways. Ooh, look at that red, the traditional Ukrainian red, that bright red and black. But when I was actually, again, I was making kits and I happened to see my floss sitting there. I really loved the Wedgwood blue and the black. So that's kind of a sneak peek. Back to Thespina's Anatomy. So the bit kit version of Thespina's Anatomy actually is one of my, one of the bit kits that does not feature a drawn thread hem finish. On this, I've had people write in and some people really, really love the drawn thread hem finish and some people find it challenging. So I wanted to have another option. And what I did on this one is we just did a simple lining. So on this, it's lined with Kona cotton. It's the same cotton that I use in the hand embroidery kits and it works really, really well as a lining fabric for embroideries. So for this, this is quite simple, does not necessarily require a sewing machine. You basically stitch your embroidery and then you pop a piece of lining fabric on it, stitch all the way around, leave a small opening, turn it inside out, press it, and then just stitch close that little opening. Now that is actually all demoed on the website at Avlia on the demos page. I did a step-by-step -step photo demo to show you how to do that. Um, showing you that little trick about using the chopstick. I think I talked about that in last week's video, how to use the chopstick to get really nice angle, you know, nice corners on this. And this is really awesome. I've actually finished a number of my embroideries, even larger ones, table runners and things like that with a cotton lining back. The one caveat to this that I will tell you is if you're going to use this technique, make sure you pre-wash both fabrics if you want the final piece to be washable. Kind of a sad story here today. I had gotten this all done for the demo, no joke. I had the lining on, I had just turned it, and I was doing the final press preparatory to the blind stitch, and my iron sputtered iron deposits all on one side. Oh my word, that was frustrating. So I washed it and of course the lining didn't fit again because I hadn't pre-washed the lining because I didn't think I was going to need to wash it. And th but what happened is I literally just took off the lining that wasn't pre-washed and I put a new lining on it. It ended up being about a quarter of an inch smaller, but it still looks great. So the Despin is an enemy design. Let's talk a little bit about the design. This design is so awesome. First off, it's not, I mean, I don't know for certain that it is technically an anemone. It almost looks like it could be a stylized tulip too, but I just love these geometric flowers. And I love how this whole geometry thing is all offset and made look really, really intricate by the use of back stitches. This is an amazing uh, example of how back stitches can totally revolutionize a cross stitch pattern. Um, you can see the, the difference here too. And here, I love the way it's contrasted. And sorry, I have a little trigger finger thing going on. So I have my little bandage on. I hope that isn't too distracting, but it's healing. Nobody worry about me. I'm doing okay. Still stitching. So the, here, the colors are put in, in the chevron in this seemingly kind of not really organized pattern. Even when I charted it, I was like, wait, there's no real organization here, but it's just this cool little repeat of colors. And here you can see how the colors kind of blend into one another in the chevron detail. But here, everything is crisp and sharp and geometric because of all of that black outlining. If you wanted to see the design as I was stitching it, you can go back a few couple weeks back on my Instagram post. I showed the design like as I was stitching it, showing it before the black was put in. And it was like, wow, that's kind of a boring design. But you add the black and everything comes alive on this. 
Then it has this really super cool little zigzag. Love the little zigzags. Very cute, works up super fast. And then you've got these really cute little things. They almost look to me like wrapped candies. That's what I think of. So they make me happy because I really like candy. Like I don't eat too much of it because it's not good for me, but I really like candy. Um, and I love these because they just, I think they just make me happy because they make me think of like those little Italian wrapped candies. Remember when Trader Joe's used to sell those? I loved those. Anyways, um, and they just have this happy feel. So it's got a whole bunch of elements going on. It's got like all this geometry of the middle motif, and then it's got this chevroning design going on. Then it's got the little zigzagging throwing things off. And then in typical Greek embroidery fashion, this fabulous little mini border that kind of really sets everything off. Now in the wall hanging version, the table runner slash wall hanging version, I chose to do three of the designs, the three central anemone motif, flanked, uh, actually kind of interspersed with the chevrons, and then a lot of the border to kind of set it off. This actually worked up really fast for me. I think I had this like entirely worked up in like under three weeks. I mean, I'm a fast stitcher, but still, this would be a really awesome, like if you're a beginner and you've been doing some big hits and you're like, I'm ready, I'm ready to take that next step, you could try this, this would be awesome. Now, so I've talked a little bit about the bit kit, so let me just finish up. So the bit kits come in a little kit, they've got the little design, little chart, bit kit, okay? The table runner slash wall hanging comes as another pattern, whoopsie, that's a full scale pattern, and that comes just like my regular patterns, lots of instructions. I'm really into like giving you lots of advice and you know, you can just ignore it if you already know what to do, but it's kind of helpful. Then on this one, you have the half size chart, full, full in, like close up half size chart. And then on the back page, it shows the entire chart so you know exactly how many repeats to work and like how to do it. So basically on this, you start out working like this. On this one, I recommend a center start. So you start in the center here and then work outwards just because it's easier. Um, you can also start in the corner, but I just found it easier to start in the center. And then you basically finish this half and then you like voila, turn it around and just do this half. So that's the pattern. Now the colors on this are just amazing. I actually love this design so much that I hung it up by my back door. So I see it every day and I just simply love it. I love the fact that you use these really fabulous colors, this garnet, this garnet and the Wedgwood blue and the Ecru which like normally wouldn't really show up on the traditional ground cloth because a ground cloth is kind of a crew itself, but it totally works. And then you add these pops of this like bright coral and this like golden olive, which is just like, I know I use the golden olive a lot, but it is just an amazing, amazing like blender color. It just like makes everything sing. And when you get all these guys talking together, such a happy family, so awesome. Now, let me talk for just a minute about the table runner thing, okay? And this is actually in the instructions. I had Kristen, our amazing graphic designer lady who like makes me look per pretty because I could not do any of this graphic design on my own at all. In fact, someday I'll have to show you guys what my patterns look like before I found a Chris, uh, before I found Kristen, like world's best ever graphic designer. And they were so homely, you have no idea. So, but Kristen actually did it. We did a little sketch here to show you how to do this. And I did it as a demo. So no fear, you can tackle this. But what we did is basically, okay, so I have these new little tapestry rods that I think I talked about them, but I really, really love them. I found this lovely lady on Etsy who makes these. And it's like this really neat little tapestry rod because the cap just goes on. Okay, there it is. But then you can take it off. And so, well, you can take it off. And it's super easy to just take off the wall hanging and use it as a table runner. And all you do for this is you just make the same lined version. Like you basically did the same lining fabric, but then the trick is, and this is all in the demos and everything on the Avalia site, all I did was I just took a seam ripper and I ripped out just a few, sorry, I know this trigger finger is really, here, let's try it with my left hand. I took and just ripped out a few stitches on the end there. That's all I did. I just took them out and then this way, if you know, one day I found some like really pretty blue flowers and my hydrangea is blooming and I'm like, oh, I want this on the table, boom, pop it on the dining room table. Or want it on my coffee table, boom, want it there. But then I'm like, well, actually no, I really just wanna look at it. When I come in and out of the house, then on to this tapestry rod it goes. And I've, I put this on the website and priced it so that if you wanna add the kit, you wanna add the tapestry rod to the kit, you get a little bit of a discount because 
it's there's a shipping savings and so i just pass that shipping savings on to you and so then you have this really cool kind of like really amazing wall hanging really heading into my wall hanging phase as a designer just giving you guys all fair warning because i just am i love the immediacy of having a textile hanging on a wall because it creates three-dimensionality like when you have something framed flat on a wall, now don't get me wrong, I have lots of stuff like framed around my house and like photographs and different things like that. And those are all great, but there's something really unique about a wall hanging on your wall because it's right there. It's not behind glass. You can see the texture, um, the light play, the way it kind of sits out just a smidge from the wall creates a sense of depth. I just think wall hangings are a really awesome thing, a really awesome way to use your embroideries in a daily in a daily fashion so well that was today's episode on thespian as an enemy um some upcoming thing oh first off thank you to everybody who is leaving youtube comments those are so helpful to me in choosing what to talk about um i have been involved with textiles well really to be clear since i was about four or five years old so i'm looking at four plus decades of textile involvement. So there's a lot of stuff I can talk about. And I've had several of you give me ideas through the comments. So that's really great. Those of you who have asked about the basket weave design, I am getting that in process as a bit kit. That's gonna be coming out soon. Oh, well, yeah, pretty soon. And then um, the sewing videos. People asked about doing the work bag as a sewing video. And I thought that was an awesome idea. So I will do that. Um, I'm waiting. I need special camera equipment, one of those little clampy things so that I can actually video at my sewing machine without somebody having to hold my camera the whole time. Um, I'm really learning about all this because you just got to bear with me. This is like a very new world for me. Great with the needle and thread, computer, the photography equipment, all that. I, I'm in my learning phase. Let's just put it that way. And what else? Um, so those comments are very helpful because they're helping me to decide what to talk about. Now, in one of the upcoming episodes, I'm gonna also talk about my new multi-size patterns. So in addition to the library edition patterns, I'm doing a new thing called a multi-size pattern. And the first pattern of that will release September 1st, right around there. And it's actually going to be the, um, it's gonna be the Athenian compass design. This is like, again, my small sample. But that one will come out again in a multi-size pattern, which I'm really excited about because I don't think anybody's really doing that. So that would be fun. And then upcoming, oh, I'm thinking of a fun one. My oldest daughter is coming into town this week. And so I'm thinking I'm gonna sit down and do a little video with my two oldest daughters and what it was like to grow up in a sewing business. So I thought that could be kind of fun, kind of a whole new kind of, uh, uh, what am I looking, what's the word I'm looking for? Kind of a new window into what this whole world is like. So I thought I'd talk about that. Uh, the work bag demo, um, talk about more designs. I thought I would do a fun one on color. Like I thought, I mean, we can, all, we can talk about color. Oh my word, for like hundreds of hours, we can talk about color. But I thought color and Mediterranean embroideries would be another thing fun to talk about. But if you have something specific that you're interested in hearing me talk about, um, let me know in the comments and I'll definitely put that into consideration for like upcoming videos. Now, I want to thank you all for being with me today. Oh my gosh, thank you, thank you, thank you. It's just, if I seem excited, people, it's just because this is like a dream come true for me. I love embroidery, and I have just done embroidery in obscurity for years. And so when I get these emails and things, and people are like, these designs are so beautiful, this is, your work is so beautiful, okay, I just don't know when the honeymoon's going to ever end on that one, because it's just so awesome. So I'm really, really grateful for this amazing tribe of stitchers, who's like, watching and, and, and inspiring me. It's just wonderful. So to remind you where I can be found, you can find my work at www.ovlea.life. Okay. You can also just Google Ovlea Folk Embroidery. You can find me on Instagram or YouTube at Krista M. West. That's Krista with a K. K-R-I-S-T-A-M as in Mary West, like the direction. And then, um, let's see, Instagram, we're doing the 90 day challenge. Uh, I have not yet decided. Oh, I just realized I totally forgot to do some sort of a special for August. There'll be some special. Whatever it is on the Avlia website, I'll also do it on the Etsy site. And then it'll be on the front page, the homepage of the Avlia site. So I've got to put that together. So anyways, glad I reminded myself of that. Thank you again for joining me. Have a really, really great day and happy stitching.